As Christmas approaches and then the new year, we at CUFI have some very exciting news to share with you. For the third year in a row, a generous donor has offered us a year-end matching grant. This year, your donation to CUFI's year-end campaign will be matched dollar for dollar up to $500,000. I am the that the world declares clearly in a unified voice that Israel not only has a right to exist, but exist as a Jewish state. It is time for America to consider a military preemptive strike against Iran to prevent a nuclear holocaust in Israel. In the Jewish tradition, a tree represents hope. It represents the future. And here at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial Museum in Jerusalem, we plant trees to honor those righteous Gentiles who risked their lives, perhaps even gave their lives, to help the Jewish people at their time of need. This tree represents hope for the future. It represents everything that we dream for, of shalom, of peace for the future. I remember walking through this garden, through this avenue, and my little daughter asking me, she said, Abba, innocently enough, Daddy, I see the trees, but why isn't there a forest? Why aren't there more trees? A gift of $700 will help a couple. And perhaps you can bring this message to the attention of your church or your Bible study group so that they can be involved in extending their hand to the Jewish people as friends so that maybe when my children's children grow up maybe they will see a forest maybe they will see a forest implanted in the lives of the people without a doubt we're living in a very very difficult time in history Without a doubt, we're living in an age, in a generation where we're seeing things that no other has seen. Uh, we're, we're definitely um, seeing um, everything that the scriptures declared about coming to pass before our very eyes. And it's very important for us to study, test the spirits, and compare everything with scripture. And I ask of you to do that today with my video. This is essentially a part one of something that I'm going to continue to do later on this week. Uh, but I felt that it's f more important for us to start dealing with with, um, with what's in my spirit right now and, and what I'm feeling from God. And that is that there is a lack of preaching when it comes to a lot of mega churches, uh, when it comes to Israel. And it seems as if people have lost track of what's important. And it seems as if um, people... I don't know if it's willingly or by ignorance are are purposely ignoring Bible verses which warn us to stay away from certain things when it comes to politics especially. Um, we, we've seen in the last week uh, so many things happen in the news. You see how Iran and Israel and how everybody is rooting for Israel to attack Iran. And I can understand if CNN says something like that or Fox News says something like that. Because that's their ultimate agenda, basically, to take over Iran as well. But from the pulpits of the Christian churches, I don't understand that. I, I can't grasp that. I, I can't understand the pastor of the status of John Hagee standing in the pulpit declaring that it's time for America to strike Iran. I don't understand that. I don't understand how believers can cheer that when the scriptures say in Matthew 5:44, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you. Christ, who was God manifested in the flesh, was spat at, beat up at, cussed at. You can imagine, yet he always walked in love. He always walked in, 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 in a biblical character. He always did everything the way he had to do it. Yet we cheer a man who's sitting in the pulpit declaring that we should bomb another country. And yet we call that Christianity. And yet we call that a move of God. 
It's not a move of God. The scriptures tell us in 2 Timothy 2 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. God doesn't want, especially believers in these end times, to be focusing on anything other than preaching the gospel. But the problem is, believers immediately say, but Tally, we can't stay silent. Tally, we have to speak up. If we don't speak up, who's going to speak up? My brothers and sisters, it's time for you to stop believing that you're serving a handicapped God. We serve a God that has been around for thousands of years in this world, uh, making us, creating us, giving us statutes, commandments, giving us everything. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He existed before time. We don't serve a God who doesn't know what he's doing. Okay? John McCain, Barack Obama, Rick Perry, the Tea Party, none of these things existed in the times of Exodus, yet God managed to use Moses to deliver the people of Israel, right? The Democratic Party didn't exist then, the Tea Party didn't exist then, yet God used him to deliver the people. It wasn't a Democratic vote either, as some people say that Moses got involved in politics, <laughs> that is that is the most absurd thing I've ever heard. It wasn't a, a, a situation where they had to go to vote in, in, in the polls and say, Oh, Pharaoh, let's, let's vote to see if you can let people go. No. God had to use force, and God does things at times because that's how, he, that's how awesome he is. But people need to really get over themselves and stop thinking that God needs them to get involved in politics to help Israel. It's, it's amazing. And, and I'm sorry that I'm sounding like this and, 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 and not that organized in, in my thoughts. But as, as I start thinking of all of these situations, it frustrates me. Because Luke 24, 47 says the following. And that repentance and release from bondage of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning where? At Jerusalem. <laughs> Powerful. This is the scriptures telling you that when we preach we should begin where at Jerusalem preaching what repentance but we don't get that you know why you don't get that because you have people who are preaching another gospel and it's hard for you to understand this sometimes because a lot of times you hold pastors like Haggy to such a high esteem that you forget that a lot of people they're falling away from the faith lately in John 10 1 forward look at what it says here Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up another way, the same is a thief and a robber. Okay. If we keep on reading down in John 10, 7-9, Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Shall go in and out and find pasture. And if we read further in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we see that Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, is saying that he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. We see that that's saying there. And it's as if we put white out on our scriptures when we attend certain churches. How is it that nobody gets upset when you see John Hagee bringing a Mormon into a congregation for a so-called church service for Israel? How is it that nobody gets upset at that, but when they see Chris Islam, they, they throw a fit? Oh, let's throw a fit about that. But yet he can bring Mormons, okay, into a congregation to preach about Israel, to talk about Israel. How is it that he himself has the nerve to do that? It's because he believes in dual covenant theology. And a lot of people who um, are loving Israelites to death are doing that. John Hagee in the Houston Chronicle newspaper quoted something. That was on April 30th, 1988. He said, I am not trying to convert the Jewish people to the Christian faith. In fact, trying to convert the Jews is a waste of time. Jews already have a covenant with God. So, that's where he stands on that. 
And I showed you a clip at the beginning of the video of the rabbi Yeshiel Eckstein who gets very emotional. You've seen him. He was in tears in the beginning of the video. But this man in 2007, it was reported in 2008 that his ministry garnered $75 million. Out of the $75 million, $30 million of that went into the wages. <laughs> it, it, this, this stuff makes me very upset. You know? Because ja John Hagee loves for you to give him your money. This man, Jashiel Eckstein, loves for you to give him your money. But look at what the rabbi says about um, us preaching the gospel to the Jewish people. Look at that. He says, whenever a Christian denominations, and look how he calls it, he calls it targeting. When you preach to a person who is of Jewish descent and you tell him to repent, he believes that's targeting. He doesn't believe that when you give him your money, though. Give me your money, but keep your gospel somewhere else, in other words. So whenever a Christian denomination issues a new call targeting Jews for conversion, I can't help raising the hackles of Jews who know their own history and how such clumsy, look at this, he calls it clumsy, <laughs> attempts at evangelism frequently end. So he calls it clumsy for you to preach repentance to the Jews. And look at this, uh, something else he wrote. I like to focus on why often, especially with the Jewish community, door-to-door -door style targeting, he calls it targeting. It's simply a poor strategy, counterproductive, pointlessly antagonizing at worst. So you have John Hagee, who is asking you to double up your efforts in 2012. Right? You have Jashiel Eckstein, who is asking you and crying in tears on camera, because he wants to plant a forest, as he said in the, in the video, asking you for your money. Okay? But there's no gospel being preached. So... My question to you, believer, okay, because I hope you open your eyes today. What do the people that are living in the land of Israel need right now? Do they need your money or do they need the gospel preached to them? What is it that they need? Because you're noticing now that Israel is becoming the new prosperity gospel in the evangelical community. You're noticing now that there's no longer any gospel being preached. It's just rallies of people waving flags. Yeah, yeah, let's vote for this the party. Let's vote for the other party. You're noticing all of that now. And we're headed into a moment in time where the gospel has to be preached now more than ever. But the evangelical community, but the Christian community is focused on Israel attacking Iran. Not only is that very ignorant because automatically you're assuming that the only people that are Israelites are in the world are those living in the land of Israel. When in reality, a large majority of those living in the land of Israel are not even of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? And think about this too. Alright? There are people who are the, of the lineage of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob living in Iran, living in Palestine, living in Islamic countries, living in different countries around the world because they're scattered all over the world. And you're saying to Israel, attack Iran, not even knowing that there's people who are true of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that are living in Iran. Look, how, look at the ignorance. We have to wake up and snap out of it. Okay? Snap out of this little religious thing that you have. Okay? And look at the scriptures. Whenever a pastor tells you, let's go to the polls, let's vote so they can attack Iran... You quote in Matthew 5.44 where it says to love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Whenever you hear a pastor tell you that they have another covenant with God, that they don't need repentance, you read in John 10.1 where it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up another way, the same is a thief and a robber. Whenever somebody tells you, but we have to get involved in the polls, if we don't get involved in the polls, something bad's going to happen. You remember them, you remind them, that before the Democratic Party and the Republican Party existed, God existed thousands of years before that. He's existed always, and he's always done his plan, and he's always worked the way he has to work it. He's never needed a man-made system to work things on his favor. When God told the Pharaoh to let him go, he had to let him go. Are you understanding what I'm trying to tell you today? Stop trying to help God with worldly measures and start preaching the gospel. Because if you don't preach the gospel, people are being lost. 
Look what it says in Acts 17.30. In the past, God overlooked ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Even those that are of the lineage of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. That doesn't mean that they're saved. It doesn't mean that they're saved because the word of God says in 1 John 2.23, Whoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you can be 100% full-blown out of the lineage of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. If you have no Son, you have no Father, and you're headed to hell. That's that simple. Okay. So quit giving your money to these ministries that are just milking you alive they're taking your money they're taking your, your your everything you've got okay okay they're saying it that they're using for Israel but they're not using it for Israel okay think about this every money that you're giving John Hagee he's using it in Q5 meetings where he's bringing Mormons you're supporting a man who's bringing Mormons into the church yet you don't support Chrislam oh that's of hell that's of Satan but it's okay for Christians to bring Mormons to to rile them up yeah that's okay right no, it's not. It's not. I can go on for hours here. But the reality is that God commands all men to repent. Whether you're an Israelite, whether you're not an Israelite. If, even if you believe that you're a Hebrew Israelite, if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. That is that simple. It is that clear. And God commands all men to repent. Okay? Let's start preaching the gospel. And let's start removing ourselves from this whole Iran thing. Okay, this is the United States plot to try to invade another country. Don't you remember Iraq? Didn't they tell you that they had weapons of mass destruction? Didn't they send millions of people to war over there and millions of people died? Didn't they do that? And then they found no weapons of mass destruction. And then on CNN, you saw a live stream of them killing Saddam Hussein. And then on CNN, they invade Libya and they show a live stream of killing that man over there. I mean, believers, snap out of this political agenda. Okay, because Jesus is coming soon. All right? Snap out of this stuff, man. This is the government trying to do something else just to try to get more money. You know? They're trying to set up this whole new world order. And they're going to use you guys all along with them. They're going to use your money to do all of this stuff. Because Israel is becoming the new prosperity gospel. And they know that when they mention Israel, a lot of believers automatically have such a love for the land of Israel that they give in to anything. But God rebuked them. In John 6.26, God rebuked them. When they were seeking him for the fact that he was able to give them little bread and little crumbs and little things. Because they, they were eaten with him. Remember, God told them, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say to you, ye seek me not because ye saw miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. They had seen the miracle that God had done in the beginning of John 6. The miracle where he had fed so many. So they were chasing him and finding him to exalt him as king. And he ran away from that. And when they came to him again, he could have allowed all that popularity to sink him in and, and allow him to continue to walk in that. But he didn't do that. He said, you seek me not because you saw miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. The thousands of Israelites, of Jewish people that people call the Israelites, that are going to these Kephi meetings. Um, even the president himself of, the, of, of Israel that's coming to these meetings. They're seeking that not because of the bread of life. They're seeking that because of the notoriety, popularity, the, the political agenda that it gives them, and so much more. But imagine if someone has the boldness of Jesus to stand there and say, You seek me not because you want the bread of life, but you seek me because of the money that I'm donating. You seek me because of the fact that we back you up politically. That's why you seek me. You don't seek me because of Jesus. You deny Jesus and preach to them repentance so that they can repent. And God bless you, family. I'm talking too much now. So, God bless you guys. Please.